Hey YouTube, got a humongous one for you today. Lots of special pieces, some regular things, some market updates. I'm here with Alex, he'll talk about Rolex AP and a couple of special independents. One really special independence that I'm in love with Very that I actually want to keep. So stay tuned. <laughs> Guys, welcome. As I just told YouTube, we have a very special unboxing today. So let's get this party started. I'm gonna start with- Where do you start? I'm gonna start with what's at the top. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna, I'm just, gonna, uh, I'm gonna, oh. Rolex Daytona that never ever got any love up until the most recent Rolex hype. Any Rolexes that were on a strap before the Sky Dweller, before the Oyster Flex and yep. the likes of these, they never really got much love. And then therefore not much of them were produced. And when you look at a timepiece like this with this very special blue dial, this was considered a dog 10 years ago. You couldn't give this away for like $12,000. Yeah. Like people were paying more for a stainless steel one than this gold one, which was a shame. Because of that, there's less of them made, they become collectible. Lo and behold, this watch trades uh, anywhere from thirty dollars to $35,000, depending on how complete it is. It's sick. It's very mature, very classy. Well, this is uh, almost like a racing-ish style. So. It is, it is. AP, uh, 25860 ST. It's the previous, previous, previous generation chronograph. Previous, 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 three times previous. Yes. Uh, 39 millimeter case size, probably the best case size for AP, in my personal opinion. Perfect fit for my wrist, I'll tell yeah. you that much. Uh, and especially in a chrono. Let me grab this. I don't know who wore this, I hope we have extra links, but it's a little, it's a little tight. I'll probably need a couple of more links yeah. or one Short or two. Fits. But, well, it, it fits awkward because it's so short and the buckle is way Either way, here. I think size-wise though, for a chronograph, it fits basically almost perfect for an average size wrist. During the hype of the Royal Oaks, these did go up to like the 40s, yeah. right? Like around $40,000, mm -hmm. but they didn't really drastically drop. Yeah. And the reason they didn't drastically drop is there's not a lot of them out there. Yeah. You know, there's guys out there, I mean, this is a watch that I remember, I remember selling for 15,000, yeah. 16,000, even mm -hmm. 13,000, right? Right. And those that have them and saw that rise, most of the people that bought these bought them sub 20,000. So when they went up to 40, now that they're down to like 30 to 35, depending yeah. on condition, they didn't really take a big drop. And the reason for yeah. that is because, again, not as many were made back then, and people like them. They're very wearable versus like their 41 millimeter counterpart. Well, this is a new one, obviously, but packaging is just, it's just nice. Like, actually, it's, this is not the one we just had. This is similar. Very similar. So, so, so this particular Urbic, one of the reasons I wanted to show you the watch first, front and back. I love how the orange matches the front. And what I wanted you to get a look at is the strap. So they came out with the strap, which is half Velcro, half rubber, half, I guess it's like a velvety, velvet. It's velvety, probably one of the most comfortable straps I've seen. Very, very soft, and and it's just. And the problem with the original Airwork straps is that the the Kevlar ones on the outside, very stiff. they were very stiff. They weren't yeah. very comfortable. So I think they did a tremendous job. And also yeah. note the bigger opening up here because of the crown yeah. being up here. Now it's a little, it's more comfortable. You can actually get your it, finger in there. It gives uh, some curvature to the watch. I'm a fan of the Velcro strap. Some people will say it may not be as safe, but I think yeah. it's just as safe as any strap that you take out of there because there's just no way this is coming off your wrist. And I'm talking pretty yeah. hard. Uh, tell me about the Rolex Daytona, specifically the black ceramic. 116 500LN reference number. It's very specific. I'm talking about values. Like where, where, where have so they these, kind of stopped and they're just like... I, I, so remember when Adrian made that comment where he was like, oh, these are gonna go up to, you know, 50,000 and 60,000. And they did? I thought he was crazy. And then they actually went up to 50 and 60,000. Now they came back down to earth where they used to be before they went up, which was around like that uh, low 30s. Basically 2X retail, it's still not a bad spot. Hold on, if people are willing to pay 2X for Batmans, 2X yeah. for GMTs, mm -hmm. uh, there's still a ton of Rolexes out there that are 2X. The ones that yeah. are not 2X are the ones that have the, you know, high retail to begin with, right. like Platinum Daytonas yeah. and some of the gold sky dwellers. Right. But every steel watch is still a 2X. Basically. Maybe some of the, just, they just are one and yeah. a half, 1.8X. But at the end of the day, this is the most popular watch but in it, the world. But at least when I came into this industry, these were still sitting at 2X. A stainless steel Daytona, regardless of the model, for as long as it's been around, even since the retail it was like $5,800. Yeah. It was still, it was, it was hovering around 2X, just under 2X, always did. But, so I, I, I guess it is what it is. And like, it's, you think this is where it's gonna stay? It's a nice buy. I don't think it's something you should be worried about. Is, is, this, is this where they're gonna stay, you feel, for a while? It's gonna go in waves, but I think for the most part, most likely, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. I'm gonna come in a little bit closer because of the new dial. 
Uh, loved the watch, absolutely. I said it before, I was a little underwhelmed with the dial change. Doesn't seem like a big deal of a change. I feel like they should have done the 5990 with the, that blue dial to begin with. Sure. I like the Vignette dial where it kind of changes colors toward the middle. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I love this, which is the integrated buckle, right? The integrated buckle versus that little flip flop that they used to have, flip top buckle that they used to have, yeah. I think is a definite plus. But I feel like, again, coming out with a new model, make it a millimeter bigger, you know, make the color more of a drastic change. Yeah. I would love to see this in a white dial. Or I would love to see this green. green. Yeah, there you go, green. But green like a green. rich green, not like the 5711 green, which was terrible. Like you can't, you know, you can, from afar, you can't tell that it's green. Well, speaking of- Oh, I knew you were gonna go there, speaking go ahead. Of rich green paddocks, uh, I'll let you do the honors. So speaking of green, like this is, this is, a, now this is This is green. what we're talking about. Yeah. This is the kind of green I'm talking about. This is uber, uber, rich green. And green. Right? That's the kind of green I would have loved to see on that 5990. I mean, look at that. Imagine that color on that. Yep. I, I will take this green over any other green in the market. I'll go out and make that bold statement. Over the green Daytona, I will take it over the green 5711 for sure. It's just, just look at it. I mean, I'm, a, I, I'm gonna go out on the limb and get, I'm gonna say this is my favorite 5270 over the salmon dial. Wow. I know if Adrian was here, he'd probably be like, yeah, yeah, whatever, because he's a big salmon guy. Do you consider salmon dials overrated or probably? A personal preference first, you know? Yes, the green is the new, you know, yeah. blue, I guess you could right. say, right? And guess what? A year from now, they're gonna go to red and all of a sudden red is gonna be the new craze, right? And don't forget about the blue and the green. Are you selling it as we're talking? What are you doing? Okay. Uh, so 5231, the World Time Clausenne dial. One of the most underrated, actually the most underrated complication in the world of watches. Let me go out on the limb again. Yeah. I'm going out on the limb today a lot. I feel people are gonna start you calling know what, You know who, this watch reminds me of Nico. Nico, because he wore this for a while. He wore that. For the a problem while. with that was when he wore that watch, it looked like a big fat sausage that was sort of like Being squeezed through. Squeezed you know, out. Yeah. yeah, squeezed out because he has a really big I guess, hand. I guess you could say that. So with that said, the world time complication is probably one of the most underappreciated, underrated complications out there. Yeah. For the life of me, I don't understand why people don't appreciate a paddock world time. They've never traded at some tremendous amount of money, except for these, because yeah. these are the Clause and A dials. Fantastic. Adrian, we're doing an unboxing. Can I call you back? Clause and A. Clause and A, I can talk about Clause and A dials for an hour. In fact, I did an episode on Clause and A dials. I showed a couple of Clause and A dial paddocks. These hand-painted, handmade dials are yeah. it. Uh, Clause and A dial paddocks, original ones from the 50s, specifically the world time, I think fetched over $5 million or something like that, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, these are now officially discontinued. Mm -hmm. uh, these were trading in the, you know, anywhere from 100 to $150,000. They're still right. hanging out in that price range because the retail price was expensive on this to begin with. And if somebody asks me about a dress paddock that they can put away, keep for quite some time and hold on for the next generation, this is one of those paddocks that I would recommend because yes. claws and dolls are not made very often. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, sing the song, Alex. This Let's do it. is very cool. One of my favorite limited edition offshores from Audemars Piguet is also the Audemars Piguet Survivor. Unfortunately, it came in a regular box. This comes with a special box that looks like a Survivor box. It's like, oh, we do? Great. It's, this, it's a rubberized box with like foam inside. It looks like a Survivor. I, took a, I remember I took a picture a while back on Instagram, maybe a couple of years back, where I put my gun inside the box, a knife inside the box, and this watch. Everything about this watch, I don't like it on the hornback strap. I like it on the original rubber strap. This is original AP. So these are the two straps you get with it, but I prefer the rubber strap because I feel like the leather refines the watch a little bit. It's supposed to be this rugged watch. The rubber strap is the way to go with this one. Uh, believe it or not, even with all this stuff protruding, it's actually easier to wear this guy than a regular offshore because it doesn't, normally the crown will dig in the side of your wrist. You know, I mean, it's-, it's, like it's a, This is like a Brabus G-Wagon. It, it is. It's like the Brabus, you, yeah. you know what? I like that analogy. I li actually do like that analogy. Mean, you know, murdered out, Big, flat black. It's just- uh, Shit coming off it. Looks good. Next up we have, and I saved the best for last, but next up we have, it's a very Ooh. low key, it's a very low key watch. RM30 white gold with a diamond case. If you want to get your watch stolen at an F1 event, this would probably be the best watch yes. to wear. But again, again, ergonomically, it's still a great watch. It's a, it's a watch, let's just say that makes a statement. Yeah, no, it's, it's, sure. it's, 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 you know, plain in terms of complications, but it certainly makes a statement. And if you want to, you would wear this in Miami. 
All day, yeah? I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> all day. That's definitely an Alex watch. This Let's talk nice. about last but not least, and I like to save the best for last. I promise you a kick-ass independent. And I told you this after MBNF, I have to say my second most favorite independent is going to be Grubel 4Z. Uh, so we're talking about this is like a the, new, the, the new S line or sports line from Grubel 4Z, 24 second incline tourbillon. Look at this beautiful watch. What they've done with the sports line is they fixed the issues that everybody's always talked about. And those issues were, number one, Too wear, big. wearability. Yeah. Number two, price tag, mm -hmm. right? Because some of the older, you know, Google 4 Zs were much yeah. higher in retail value uh, due to use of materials, due to a bunch of other things. So they didn't sacrifice the quality of Google Say. Again, going out on a limb. I'm going on a limb all day today. Going out on a limb, I'm going to say that these are the best made watches in the world, quality wise. It takes forever to put one of these together. Yeah. You have a master watchmaker that will work on a single watch six months to a year, take it apart, put it back together three times, making sure it works properly. And what yeah. the other issue they fix is ergonomics. The other older Grubel 4s, they weren't very wearable if you have a small wrist because they were pretty big dress flat yeah. watch. Here, the ergonomics here are insane. Throwing this on, even with a deploying buckle, it seats, it seats. What did I say? Seats? Seats. It, it sits. Sit. It sits extremely comfortable on the wrist. Now, this thing is light. It's made out of titanium. Uh, it just sits perfect. What would make it even more perfect is all the stuff that it comes with. So, it also comes with one, two, three rubber straps, right? So, Grubel Forze, again, one of my absolute favorite independents out there after MBNF and probably even in line with MBNF, a little different price point, a little bit higher, but they did make the retails lower on the sports line. So the yeah. retails are around that 225 mark, depending yeah. on the company. But there's only 18 of those in the world. I, think I just absolutely piece. love this timepiece. And I've never seen a watch roll like this. It's like a pouch. But it doesn't come out. Like, you know how they have like the pillow? They said, screw the pillow, let's do a pouch. This is where we play. So what are you saying? <laughs> All right, so guys, I wanted to thank everyone for tuning in. Alex, thank you for sitting in with me on this unboxing Thanks while Adrian is still me. taking the sun rays. I think I might just replace Adrian because you, you agree with everything I say and Adrian I doesn't. Just, I'm here for the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> You're here for the jokes? Oh yeah, he's the funny one in the company. You like that one? Stay tuned for our next unboxings. You won't regret it because we do it pretty badass.